We've already discussed border properties a bit. Here we'll go a little more in depth into some of the values of the border property. The border property allows you to, well, apply borders. I know, it's shocking. The CSS border property allows you to define the border area of an element's box. Borders appear directly between the margin and the padding of an element. Using border allows you to set the values of border width, border style, and border color. The border property may be specified using one, two, or three of the values listed below. The order of the values does not matter. Here are the various subsets of the border property. First, we have border style, which allows us to set the style of the border. Clearly, we have many choices available. We also have border width. This can take either numeric or keyword values, and it will specify the width of the border. And finally, we have border color. Any of the colors that we've covered in this course are fair game for styling the color of the border. We talked in an earlier exercise about how we can apply shorthand properties to many of the box-related properties. This is true for the border as well. If we're styling the border width, border style, or border color, we can use the shorthand syntax to target the various sides of the box. We'll look at this in an actual HTML file. Here's the HTML that we'll be using for this particular example. As you can see, the page is fairly simple. Inside my section, I have several divs, each with your own unique class identifier. In regards to the CSS, I have some basic styling as well as rules for my div elements. I'm having the divs display as inline block so they appear side by side. I'm also giving them a width and a height and a border that is solid one pixel and a midtone gray. This is using the shorthand method of assigning the border style, the border width, and the border color. In addition, I have a margin of 1M. For this example, I'm going to increase the border width on all of my divs to 10 pixels so that it appears a little bit wider. This will allow us to properly see the various styles that we're going to be looking at. Next, I'll go ahead and I'll declare a border style rule for many of the unique div elements that I have on my page. I'll be assigning the first seven elements a border style of dashed, dotted, double, inset, outset, groove, and ridge. If we save the page and refresh in the browser, you're going to see that the new borders are going to appear on the elements. Dashed and dotted are pretty self-explanatory. Double allows you to double up the border. And then when we have the additional four, inset, outset, groove, and ridge, they all create a 3D type of look on our elements. If we alter the colors on any of these elements, so let's go ahead and add some additional property value pairs of color, you'll see when we apply the colors and refresh, the borders that we've applied colors to are now going to appear with those colors. Because these create more of a 3D type of look, we will see the color and then a darker iteration of those colors, which allows these elements to look more three-dimensional. Now let's go ahead and let's target the example eight element. For this element, I'm going to apply a border style but instead of applying a simple border style all the way around, I'm going to apply different border styles. So for this one, I'm going to apply a double to the top. Then I'm gonna specify double for the right, and I'll do solid for the bottom and dashed on the left. If we save now and we refresh our page, you can see how this particular element allows me to use different border styles all the way around the box. This is using shorthand, and it follows the rules that we discussed before, where we start at the top of the clock, move to the right, move to the bottom, and then move to the left. In addition to applying border style in this way, we can also do this with the other border properties. For the ninth div element, we're going to use border width. 
we'll define different values for every side of our box element. If we save and refresh, you can see how the width of the border can be controlled per each side. In addition to adding the border width, I'm going to add border color as well. We will style each edge of the border to be different, so I'm going to specify border color and then we'll pass in our HSLA values. I'm going to use the same shade of green that we used above, but for each side of the box I'm going to declare a varying degree of alpha. So we'll start off with 80% for the first element. For the second side, the right side, we're going to reduce this down to 60. For the bottom, we'll make it 40, and for the left edge, let's make it 20. If we save now and refresh, you can see how we've created our own custom edges for this particular box element. The final thing that I want to show you in regards to creating the borders on our elements is that in addition to assigning border widths, we can also make some of the border widths disappear by simply making them zero. If I declare zero for the top and the bottom and eight pixels for the right and the left, you'll see how I end up with a box that just has borders on the right and the left. This will allow you to create some unique styling when you're building your pages. In addition to specifying an exact value for the border, we can also use keywords like thick, thin, and medium. If I specify thin for the top and the bottom and thick for the right and the left, you're going to see that my box ends up looking like this. In order for the border width and the border color to work, you must define a border style. By default, the border style property is not set, so we had declared that up above. But if we did not declare it, so for instance, if I comment out this line of code, you'll see that the boxes where I do not declare a border style are eliminated from view. So example 9 and example 10 no longer exist because I've deleted that. I'm going to bring that back by uncommenting out, and if we refresh, you can see that all the borders that we have established now are present. If you want to declare different border colors, styles, or widths, you need to use the specific border width, border color, or border style. The shorthand property of border only supports specifying one style, one width, and one color. Clearly, we have a lot of options when it comes to adding borders to our elements. You'll be able to control any element on your page and add just the sort of border that you're interested in by utilizing the various property and values that we discussed here.